and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be looking at Lara Fabian's Vocalese from the 2014 Kremlin concert. Uh, she will be accompanied by Igor Kotoy, and with that I'm just going to get started. <laughs> So as we begin, one of the things you notice here is that she is not saying any words. This is a vocalise, so there won't be any lyrics to this. Um, vocalises are designed to allow the artist to use um, the tones of their voice only to communicate the message of the song. So you're going to notice throughout here that she's going to be using vowels and humming and, and her the placement of the tone, so whether or not it sounds nasally or whether it sounds really open, to help create a, a, a sound that helps communicate the message. She will also be using, if I haven't mentioned it, like volume and, and sort of bending and other stuff like that. Um, I don't know if she does bending, she's not, she doesn't do that normally. But how she uses her voice and the volume and how she grows a section, how she brings it back, that's what you're going to be looking for in this particular piece, is this is a vocalise. Um, traditionally, vocalises are used for people to practice a particular skill um, also is as another option for this. But in this case, it's her using her voice to communicate this particular message without using lyrics. <laughs> I'm going to back it up in a second. Right there is exactly what I was talking about. If you notice in there, she took a note, she grew it really big, and then dropped it really softly, and then sort of tweaked it a little bit. And so those are the things that are going to happen in this particular piece. She's going to use that volume control, the way that she opens and closes her mouth, the way she places the tone. That's, that's the stuff that I was just talking about. So we'll go back for a couple of seconds, and we will play that again.
So as you can see, she's using, like she said, her, like we said, her voice to create that message. Um, I'm again going to call out the the sets because again, when you're dealing with Igor Kotoy, he is an amazing producer of musical of musical productions and. As we can see here, there's this whole thing going on in the background, that whole plane crash thing. If someone can explain to me how those two things interconnect, how this song connects to that, that would help me immensely. I It's one of those pieces I'm not quite catching. And again, it could just be me just not just seeing one thing. But if someone knows that whole backstory of, of the story that's going on behind her um, on the screen... Um, that would be awesome. Just put that in the comments. So let us continue. <laughs> I say this very rarely about her tone, and this is the only time that I sort of mean it. Um, a lot of people, if you look at comments about her tone, is that she sounds like Celine Dion. Now, in most performances, I will say no, because Celine Dion has a very nasal sort of sound to her her tone, and and Lara has this very like open sound all the time all the all the sound comes up and over and then out rather than being focused really up here but in this particular section here i'm going to say that she sounds a lot like celine dion only because she's imitating a trumpet right here and that trumpet requires that sort of nasalness and and again i imitate people singing a lot and I, and not that i'm good at it it's just that i imitate where they place stuff i'm really good at feeling where they're placing the sound in their in their in their face. And what I'm hearing right here is that all of this stuff is coming out right here. This whole section is coming out here because it's how you get that la da da da. You have to get that that tone. You have to get that trumpet tone. I'm not going up into her octave, but to get that trumpet tone, you have to hit this part of your 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 sound. And that that comes across a lot like Celine Dion. And so I just wanted to make that that point. Um if anybody is ever going to compare her to uh, Celine Dion. This would be the place to do it, but only because she's making a very concerted effort to use that trumpety sound that um, Celine Dion has a tendency to go into when she goes really high and really nasal. So let me go back and we can listen to that again. <laughs>
I love her breath control. I love her phrase management. I love her holding notes out. I love her ability to just let, uh, yeah. I I am a sucker for a a well designed phrase, something where somebody isn't cutting things off every thirty sec like every two seconds to take a breath. I love the fact that she has the ability to take a breath and then be able to sustain a, a line for a really long period of time. And that's why you saw me go into that big weird smirk there. Is that she she borrowed from it, all of her all of her sort of indirect mentors, the people that she grew up with, because again, she's only a year older than I am. And so, you know, one of the people that, again, she's, she's like indirectly mentored by is, is Barbara Streisand and Barbara Streisand is known for her really long notes and, and her ability to phrase and, and her, her breath support and control and stuff like this. And this is one of those moments and I'll, I'll play it back again. And, and where, where another person might take a breath. And for some reason, the word Lady Gaga is popping into my head. I love her, but I don't think she could do this um, is this where she just starts a phrase and, and she just runs that phrase out. And again, it's, it's that sort of stuff that gives her all these options in the world. It gives Laura a whole bunch of options because if you know that your breath is going to be there for you, you have a lot of things that you can do. You can drag things out. You can slow things down. You can speed things up. It's, it's just an amazing thing. And you can, you can play a little bit better because you know that if you decide to start playing with the notes, your breath support is going to be there. So anyway, I'm going to be quiet now. This just excited me. I'm sorry. It's late at night. This is a very rare time that I'm actually recording. Um, so, uh, must have had too much caffeine. So let's go back and we'll listen to that that little ending again because it's just amazing because again, breath support and and Lara being Lara. Just that's it. <laughs> So I've talked a lot throughout this whole thing. Um, go back through timestamp places where you really enjoyed listening to her do her vocalese, just where you really enjoyed hearing the different tones that she she used within here. The humming, I I love the humming at the beginning. She's she's a master hummer. She loves humming. It's really great when you watch any of her videos. All that like adagio and a lot of them. There's always a section where she hums to start. It's amazing stuff. Um, and then her her volume control when she goes really loud to really soft. I mean, she's just a master of this sort of stuff. And again, like um, it always comes back to breathing. It all comes back to breath support. If you don't have the breath support, it gets very difficult. And so she's she's going to always win just because of that. And and that that is something that sadly, because she came into the into she came into our world at the same time as Celine Dion the United States didn't get her the rest of the world did and and I feel sad that I missed that um but again I I understand that that whole part um but it's great stuff again I'm going to let it go at this please leave your comments below like subscribe I hope you enjoyed this. Please, if I make a mistake, please, you know, just gently correct me in the in the comments. I, I make mistakes all the time, um, and that's okay. Um, but again, just enjoy your day, enjoy your weekend, and as always, be safe.